G'day commas and welcome to this my YouTube channel. I don't actually really sound like that. I had this overwhelming need to uh, practice my Australian. Yes, I'm British, Australian and all over the world. Thank you very much. I understand that uh, someone from South Africa is watching me as well. Oh, I've got some South African friends here as well and they are awesome. So welcome if you are out there. Good to have you along for the journey. Um, what are we doing today? Well, lit and linear, oh, we can't even say it. Linear, literal equations and simultaneous linear, literal equations. That is a tongue twister that you can't even say when sober. And uh, not that I suggest that anyone out there should imbibe with alcohol while watching my videos, although it could make it slightly more interesting. Anyway, enough. Uh, welcome, if you haven't already done so, do me a favour. Subscribers mean the world to me. It actually shows me that people are watching. You can't believe how weird it feels sitting in here on a 37 degree day today, surrounded by studio lights, thinking you're talking to yourself. So, over there is a little cornery doohickey on YouTube, if you're watching this on YouTube, that you can click subscribe. Otherwise, can you head on over to uh, YouTube and subscribe to my channel, slash maths guru. Um, what have we been doing recently? Well, in previous sections, we looked at actually solving linear equations, simultaneous equations, and worded problems. And I said this video was going to build on that knowledge. While this is a CAS course, and we can use our CAS to solve a huge variety of questions, if you're in Australia doing methods three and four, one of the papers is absolutely CAS enabled. You can use your CAS calculator, and life is good, but one of them isn't. And sadly, one of the things that you might be expected to do is solve linear literal equations. You're going to go, what on earth is a literal equation? Well, I'm going to be literal now and tell you. <laughs> yeah, I got up early this morning to make that joke and it failed miserably. Okay, so as I say here, what is a literal equation? Well, basically, it's an equation where your solutions are in terms of pronumerals instead of numbers. All the equations we've had before, so if I had 2x, plus 3 is equal to 6, for example, then we would solve this by subtracting 3 from both sides, dividing by 2, and we'd end up with 3 on 2. We'd end up with actually a numerical answer. Well, that's uh, unfortunately not what a literal equation is. A literal equation is going to end up with your answer in terms of pronumerals. There's going to be no numbers. Uh, I mean, there might be numbers, but it's unlikely. The whole point of this is, as I say here, just think of it as sort of rearranging a formula, trying to change the subject of the formula. And I suppose the best example, and I promise you this is going to be a short video because I've only got three examples. So an example might be qx minus r is equal to q. So what are we trying to do? The question says solve the following equation for x. And that in this situation just means we'll rearrange things and get x on its own. So we get qx minus r is equal to q. So I'm going to add r to both sides and we get qx is equal to r plus q. And x is going to be equal to r plus q all divided by q. And actually, that's pretty much it. Now, you could write this answer in a different way, and that would suggest that you could also write r on q plus 1. Now, lots of people look at this and go, ah, voodoo? And I'm like, no, no, nothing to do with voodoo, I promise. Absolutely everything to do with fractions. Now, I know that many people out there hate fractions, and I'm just going to say to you, look, what we do in maths forward, you can do backwards. So if I was to give you the example of a half plus a quarter, now, normally speaking, at this point, everyone would go mental. They'd either write that down as two sixths or it'd all just go horribly wrong because people are like, I can't do fractions, they're too hard. When you add fractions, the bottoms must be the same. The denominators must be the same. So what I tend to do then, and really breaking this down, that becomes two quarters plus one quarter. And if you're sitting there going, what are you talking about? Bear with me. What would my next step be? Well, we would make those over a common denominator and we do two plus one, and that becomes three on four. Now, the strange thing is that we miss this step out. Most of the time, we'll skip it. And actually, I think that's one of the most important steps. Because look what happens if you reverse it. The top of my fraction has a plus in it. It can also work with a minus sign. And as a result, it meant we could split this up into these two individual fractions here, then simplify it. And actually, that's what I've done here. This positive sign here has said, OK, I can now split that up into r on q plus q on q. And we know that q on q is equal to 1. And so simplifying that, we get r on q plus 1. Happy? Right, same thing. So moving on now, solve the following equation for x. Now we've got two x's again. And using my favorite Spice Girls 2 becomes 1 reference. And maybe there's Spice Girls playing behind me. I can't resist it. I'm sorry. Oh, shh. Fabulous. Love, 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 love. Just 
Ah, uh, I hear the Spice Girls are reuniting again. Hmm, moving on. So, BX plus C is equal to DX minus P. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move my X terms all onto the one side. So, I'm going to say BX plus C is equal to DX minus P. So, write the question now. And now let's BX minus DX plus C is equal to negative P. Now, if you're screaming at me saying, why am I making this really, really slow? There are lots of people out there who actually find this quite challenging, and so step by step will help. Just uh, skip the steps you don't feel you need. So bx minus dx is equal to negative p minus c. All right, so I've got my x terms both on the same side. What am I going to do now? Two becomes one, and how do I turn two x's into one? I factorize. So I'm going to take an x outside. That leaves b minus d is equal to the negative of p minus c and so to get x on its own it's now connected by a kissy kissy or a times and so i can move that bracket underneath so i get or divide both sides by that which gives me negative p minus c all over b minus d and there we go so realistically speaking again that's just making x the subject this literal equation stuff is is fab but it's all algebra then we get to solving literal simultaneous equations yes as if you thought you couldn't actually make simultaneous equations any more difficult because we already know we can do it through elimination and substitution and CAS and matrices and graphically. Now we're going to throw it in such that there aren't even number values. Okay, in my previous video, I said that we need to remember the process of elimination for simultaneous equations. If you haven't already watched it, uh, there will be a link above now that you can click and watch. But otherwise, this is what we need to do. So first things first, I'm going to try and solve the following simultaneous linear equations for x and y. Now, though I've talked about elimination here, the funny thing is I can actually do this by substitution. Now, why can I do this by substitution? Because I know that I've got y is equal to ax plus c and y is equal to bx plus d. Now, for that one point when the graphs meet, remember simultaneous equations are just about graphs meeting, and I'm not doing the no deal stuff. Um, so at that one point where they meet, that one solution, the x values and the y values are the same in both equations, which means that I can now say that if this and this are the same, then this and this must also be the same. So equating them, I get ax plus c is equal to bx plus d, right, and it wants me to solve for x and y, so very much like I've just done in that previous example, I'm going to say ax minus bx is equal to d minus c. So I've just swapped things over there, I've taken the bx from one side and moved it over, and I've swapped the plus c to the other side to make that a negative c. Now, two become one, I can't resist it, it's weird, isn't it? x is a minus b is d minus c, so x is d minus c, all over a minus b. That looks gross, doesn't it? And guess what? We're not finished the question because we know that once we found my x value, I then have to go back and find my y value. And how do I do that? By substituting it into my equation. So we know that, let's use that first equation, y is equal to ax plus c. We now know that x is given by a multiplied by d minus c, all on a minus b plus c. Right, we're going to simplify that down and we're going to multiply out the brackets to give me AD minus AC all on A minus B. Now, you're going to sort of say to me, why am I doing this? The point of it is, because I have a fractional value here, I'm going to want to look for some sort of a fractional value for my Y. In an exam question, they'll tell you the form that they want you the answer to, to have the answer in. In this situation, though, I'm just going to go with convention. So at this moment in time, I do not have this as a single fraction. So I'm going to put them over a common denominator of A minus B. Well, I've got AD minus AC already there. I'm going to add C and multiply that by A minus B, extending that line over. Uh, y now becomes equal to AD minus AC plus AC minus bc all over a minus b. Now the reason I've done this is because that minus ac and that plus ac cancel and I get ad minus bc all over a minus b. Whoa ladies and gentlemen there we go there are my solutions for my x and y. Now that was using substitution 
Now, substitution is awesome, but not always going to be possible to be used. So let's have a look at the same example with elimination. So what I've done is I've now rewritten my question with the elimination back in the form it was. But this isn't the form that we would normally write elimination in. So I'm going to refactor it. I'm going to say, well, minus AX plus Y is equal to C and minus BX plus Y is equal to D. Okay, because when we eliminate, we're looking for coefficients in front of the X or the Y to be the same. Looking here, then we see, well, minus A and minus B, are they the same? No. Uh, let's look at the front of the Y values, positive one and positive one. Thank you very much, that's the one I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna look to eliminate my Y values. How am I gonna do this? Well, looking at the signs in front of those Y values, they're two positives, and a positive and a positive normally makes a positive. And in this situation, I know to reverse it for simultaneous equations on this stage and this stage only to make it a subtract or a negative. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna subtract equation number two from equation number one. All right, so I'm gonna do the top one minus the bottom one. What's that gonna give me? Well, minus AX minus minus BX is gonna give me the negative of AX plus BX, my y values are thankfully going to disappear, and I'll end up with c minus d. My right, 2 becomes 1 again. I can't resist it. Uh, that becomes x minus a plus b is equal to c minus d. So doing a bit of shifting around, that becomes c minus d all on b minus a. Yes, we have our answer. Let's just check to make sure that it is, in fact, the answer that we got above. Hold on a moment. That said d minus c on a on b, and I have c minus d on b on a. Ah, oh, the world goes crazy. I've got it wrong. What am I? No, I haven't. Now, interestingly, the answers in the back of a textbook will be one answer, and there are many, many ways for answers to look the same, but actually look different or be different. That made no sense whatsoever. What I'm saying is the answers, the answer you get would look different from the answer in the back of the book, but actually they're both correct. So how is C minus D over B minus A the same as D minus C over A minus B? Well, I can actually take out negative one from the top and that will swap that to give me D minus C. And I can take a negative one out from the bottom, which gives me A minus B. And what do I notice? Well, that minus one and that minus one cancels. And thus, I end up with the answer above. Now, my advice to you is if when you look at your answer or compare your answers, they're close, see whether you can manipulate your answer to get to one in the back of the book or vice versa. Again, exam questions tell you the form that they want an answer if there's going to be some sort of ambiguity. But algebra-wise, it's always useful and helpful to be able to say, ah, okay, I can see why my answer and their answers are the same, but different. So using my value of x, how would I now find my value of y? Well, I'd substitute into that original equation ax plus y is equal to c. We'd rearrange it to give y is equal to ax plus c, which happens to be the question. Substitute in my x value, which gives me a, d minus c on a minus b all plus C, and the rest, as they say, is history, because I've actually already done it previously, so feel free to rewind and see what I'm gonna do there. Now, the whole point of this uh, exercise is to tell you that uh, simultaneous equations and making formulas, uh, the different subjects of formulas, is just processes. If you learn those processes and understand the algebra, you really won't or can't go wrong. Yes, you might make mistakes of plus or minus signs, but on the whole, the theory is there for you to learn. So please, please, please practice this one. It's, it's huge if you're out there doing Method Stream 4. Otherwise, I think I'm calling it a day. If you haven't already done so, please, can you subscribe by clicking that circle? As I said at the beginning, knowing people are watching this is actually really, really useful to me. Uh, uh, it saves me sitting thinking I'm sitting in a room on my own, talking to myself uh, and the dog who's asleep under the desk. Otherwise, there is a video loading for you over there. Enjoy. This is Mask Guru, signing out. Bye-bye.